Hey everyone, I'm really excited for today's video because we're going to be going into more advanced step component functions. And I think that after I finish this video and um, the jump zero video, you'll be able to do a whole lot with your OPZ. But on top of that, once I've finished talking about the other step components, uh, this is going to be kind of one of the building blocks videos for some of the more advanced things I'll talk about eventually. So we're going to be covering jump today. So that looks like two steps connected, like I mentioned before. We're covering values five through nine. I'm gonna really quickly tell you what they do. They're all pretty simple to understand, but a bit harder to apply musically. And um, I'll tell you more about what they do when I go over these, uh, but I won't be going over them in order. So I at least want to say what they do in order right now. Five skips ahead, six jumps behind, seven goes to a random step within your step count, eight will keep the sequencer in one place, and then nine, will catch this track sequencer or wherever this track is back up to the global track or wherever the the kind of overall pattern sequencer is so i'm going to go almost in in uh in backward order but first i want to talk a little bit conceptually in my view step components are instructions for the sequencer um, and i almost view jump the sparks and then pulse and pulse hold as being almost like syntax in a way because i can really control exactly what the sequencer does and it feels like I'm almost using a little kind of uh, programming language in a way. And between these steps and everything else on the OPZ, there's a ton of redundancy. And I think that that's what gives it so much flexibility and makes it so great to use. So I'll start off with jump seven as our first example. And these will be a bit less musical, <laughs> but they'll be hopefully a bit more, uh, uh, maybe they'll illustrate things well. I did not mean to be on the kick track. So I'm moving to the leads track now. So I'll put just eight steps like that. Then I'm going to change the step length, the step count to eight, but I'll keep, uh, I'll move the step length to four. And what I'm gonna do here is if I put a random jump on each of these, it'll just randomly, let me turn off that metronome. But you can kind of see the sequencer jumping around and not necessarily following an order that you might expect. There's a couple cool ways I think you can use this. One would be, instead of having all of these also go to random, make them all go back to the first step. Okay, this is hilarious. My whole point of letting it play out for that long was that eventually it's going to double trigger this one. It's going to, random is eventually going to jump to this spot. And the problem is that at that point it kind of messes with your rhythm. One thing I've recently gotten really into is actually using um, jump nine. So jump nine, like I said, um, let me just do a brief tangent. If I put a step count four there and I make my, uh, or sorry, a pulse four there and I make my step count 16, um, this isn't going to follow where the rest of the track is. So, so the other track will keep moving while this stays on that step I've told it to pulse. So if I put a jump nine, it will immediately catch back up after it. So it'll play this step with all the pulses, play this one, and then it'll catch up. You can't stack jump nine on top of pulse, comp uh, on top of a uh, pulse or a pulse hold because it will um, just keep going. Pulse holds, it's a little bit weirder. Let me add a note here just to illustrate. So if I do a pulse hold of four, Oops, a pulse hold of four, yeah. And I do a jump nine. It's going to hold this for four steps worth of um, of time, but the sequencer, sequencer will keep moving. And then weirdly enough, it won't play this again until it's gone through all four of those steps. Weird, right? I think there's probably some cool application there. I just haven't really thought of it yet. So that's where jump nine comes in, it comes in. Um, I'm going to erase those step components. I'm gonna change the tra step count by holding track and shift back to eight. I'm gonna be narrating a little bit less this time as far as every single button I press because this, like I said, is a more advanced video. And I'm just gonna re-enter in the C major scale here, plus the octave, and uh, keep it at eight. And what I'll do is I'm going to put a random, so a jump seven on this first step, but one thing I think is really cool to do is what if we put a jump nine on everything else here? So it basically means that the sequencer is going to go from here to any other step, and then it's actually going to just catch back up with the regular track, and it's not gonna be randomized again until it comes back here. 
So it's kind of cool. It, it sort of goes out of time and back in time frequently. So interesting. Um, I actually really enjoy that one. So let's talk about jump eight next. So we've covered jump nine, which is aligned to global. We've covered jump seven, which is random. Jump eight um, is stay. And I'm going to erase all the notes right here. And I'm gonna show you a couple different ways that you could use jump eight. So you can use it kind of redundantly with pulse. So let's say I put a C right here and I add a pulse. Um, I'll do a pulse four. That's about the same as, oops, I could have just removed the step component. Put that C there. That's about the same as if I put a jump eight with a component spark four, four, four. Four, nope. <laughs> I think I got it right at first. Um, I, I wanted to play three times, but not four. So it's about the same. One interesting way that they, they differ though is that if I do a trigger spark on this, I'll just make it two so it's even easier to hear. It won't play any of the first pulses, and then it'll play all of the second ones. But if I use that same technique, and this is what I'm talking about with that redundancy, if I say um, jump eight, so stay, do that the first three, but not the fourth time. And uh, I'll say play one of every two. So it actually obeys that, and it, it'll cycle through the parameter sparks. It obviously you can't use the step components with that because you use, or sorry, the component spark with that because you're using that to control the stay. But I just think that's a really interesting. It kind of solves an issue I had for a long time when I was learning how to use pulse. Um, you could also use this as a pulse multiplier. Um, actually, sorry, one thing I really want to go through first is if you do end up using jump eight. Uh, especially if you end up using it kind of like with pulse hold, uh, there's, a, there's things that can go wrong and get weird. And you might have to do some extra counting. Uh, I won't go into that in this video, but just know that it isn't always super predictable, uh, and things can go a bit haywire sometimes. So with that being said, let's talk about what happens if you use, um, jump eight as a pulse multiplier. So what I mean by that is, let's say that we pulse this four times, and then we jump eight all but four. This is gonna be a bit wonky because it's going to play this step three times in a row. Each time it plays this step, it's going to do that pulse of four. Let's just make it three so it's a little quicker. But on the fourth time, it will not stay and it's not gonna play it three times. So it played 10 times because it did three, basically three sets of three, and then it had just the one note. So you will have to do some addition if you want to actually fully use this. Um, but I just thought it was neat because you could really make some extreme values. For instance, if I put a note here and then I add a pulse nine, a pulse hold eight, and a jump eight with a component spark of the first seven, I believe what I will get here is it's not going to sound great because it's going to be a lot of really long sustained notes, but I believe what I've set up there is, I think that'll be a count of 72 times three plus one. So that's what, uh, 217 times it'll, it should repeat, repeat this note. That's a bit extreme. You probably don't want to do that, but you can use this for rests. Uh, for example, if you want it, to, if you want the track to rest a certain number of counts before it moves on, kind of like what I did with pulse and pulse hold, you can also do that with stay. You can also use stay if you only want something to play like maybe once or twice. So let's do this very, uh, let's just do those, those notes. What if I only want this to play through twice at the beginning of the pattern, then not again? I'm going to preview the jump right here by saying, let's add a jump five. So that's going to have it skip this step. But because it's skipping this step, I'm going to add a pulse two. So that way this one, so that it keeps up with the sequencer. And then I'm going to add a, um, oh, that's it for that step. <laughs> oh, no, it's not. I'm going to say it's going to happen um, the first, but not the second time. Then this step, I am going to put a jump eight. So what's going to happen is a sequencer, 
put this at one so it doesn't take forever. Sequencer is going to go through here, skip this step, and then come back to it. And now it's done. And now it will not play anymore until I change patterns. So it's just kind of a neat way of sort of having like a little trap for it that you can put almost anywhere in a pattern if you want something to stop playing for the rest of the pattern. Uh, if you want the track to stop playing for the rest of the pattern uh, anywhere. Okay, so I want to talk about maybe my favorite. And I saved these for last because I knew I would take forever and I'm sorry if this video ends up being way too long, but um, jump five and six. So this, these go five, we'll skip a step. So if I put a jump five here, it's going to not play this step, but it'll skip right to here. Six will bring it to the step before it. It's a bit confusing, but one way that you can think of it is if you look at this logo, it's like five has to jump to six, six has to jump back to five. So that's the best way I can think to explain that. Um, and you can use that for a lot. So one thing I wanna talk about, and this is back to really controlling the sequencer with the step components. For my video on the scientist, I there's a lot of repeated chords and you're gonna run out of space on the sequencer if you enter every single one for every song but uh, there's this like repetitive pattern. And so I'll just put the first two um, steps for it. So that's gonna be, the first step is gonna have an F and an A, and the other one is just a C. And what I'll add here is I'm going to change the step length to four, then I'm going to add a jump six, so that's backward, that's gonna be skipping backward, and I'll have it do it the four, 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 one, two, three, but not four. And we're not going to go through the whole song, but my point is that if you have this simple kind of piano thing, instead of having this take up eight steps or something like that, you can have it just take up two. Things can get a little bit, uh, <laughs> things can get a little bit weird too. So what if I remove those? I'm going to move this step over as far as it goes by pressing minus 12 times. Then I'm just going to pulse this four times and tell it to jump ahead afterward. Because these are overlapping, it's gonna sound almost the same. Faster. But it sounds about the same, it's just played faster because um, there's less space between them. But it's not playing the step technically. But it does react to what's on this step. So if I add a multiply, oops, a multiply four, because half of this step overlaps here, it's going to play this note twice because it's playing it four times total on this step. I don't know if that makes sense. And you can get really, really interesting with this sort of thing. Like if you wanted to do that, if you, or let's, let's just do this and let's add a multiply nine. So that's a broken chord. So now this is going to play each of these at a um, 16th note each, but it's only gonna play the first two that are overlapped here. Anyway, I just think that that's a very, very interesting thing. And I'm sure there's a lot more I could do with overlapping steps. And uh, just wanted to kind of preview that for anybody else who might wanna mess with it. Okay, so I'm gonna clear the sequencer now, clear all the steps, and I'm gonna change this to one. One thing that I think is a really cool trick is you can literally think, in my opinion, you can use EuroPZ just to think in regular compositional terms, like um, what if I repeated this section and had it run backward? And so that's exactly what I'm gonna show you right here. So I'm going to just put um, very simple notes here. Okay, what I'm going to have the sequencer do is play this these four steps backward every second time. And what I'll do for it, and what I'll do to accomplish that, um, actually let's do it every fourth time, just so that way it really emphasizes the weird counting. I'm going to put the jump six, because that goes backward. Six goes to five. And I'm going to have it do it only on the fourth time. On these two steps, they will also jump backward, but I'm gonna have them do it on the fifth time because they're gonna have to cross here the fourth time before they get to this step. So technically, when I want them going backward, it's their fifth time being played. But I don't want to then just go back forward, so right here, I'm actually going to add a jump nine. So when the sequencer is running normally and it hasn't gone backward, jump nine isn't going to do anything, but when it has played it backward, jump nine should take it straight from this step back here. One more thing to add. On this step, I also need to add a pulse two, and the reason for that is because it will go the sequencer will go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, which takes it out of rhythm instead of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So let's let's listen to this uh, once again a masterpiece.
So just kind of a neat thing that you could do to, to really like, if, if you want to be like, I want this chord progression to run backward every however many times, you can totally do that using this technique. Uh, you can also, actually let me show you an example on that. So I'm gonna move to the chords track really quick and I'm going to just enter in, uh, I don't know, A, uh, D, um, C sharp minor, I don't know, uh, F sharp minor. And I'm just gonna make this uh, four steps. I'm gonna make the step length four. And so this just goes forward, right? But what if I was curious about what it would sound like to mix it up? If I add a jump five here, I know that it's gonna go from here to this step. So then on this step, I'll add a jump six. So I know it's gonna go to this step. Then that step, I add a jump five. So it plays it in a different order. I could also just say, you know, only do that every other time. Okay, uh, one more topic that I wanna cover, and then I think that uh, I'm just about done with this very long video. Uh, I just erased the pattern. So I'm gonna talk about jump five and counter resets. I've talked before about how the counter reset, so that's um, parameter spark zero, component spark zero and trigger spark zero, they'll all reset the counters for these different sparks. Um, they'll recount like the parameter spark counter, but you really can't skip over them. So one workaround is you could just do our, our we'll say, oops, didn't mean to actually put a note there. Shift, and I'm just gonna select this step because I want it to reset right here. So on this step, it's gonna play twice. Then it's gonna jump ahead of this step. And it's only gonna do that on the first time because on the second time, I want it to actually play that um, counter reset. So here, it skips over it, and then this time, it'll reset the counter. So that's just kind of a way of adding conditions to, to uh, step components that otherwise don't have conditions. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching, and thanks for bearing with me as I go over some of the more advanced stuff. I'm really excited to get into some more depth about this. I'm very excited to talk about jump zero, and then after that one, I'll do all the rest of the ones I haven't talked about, and then we'll get uh, really advanced. So thank you so much for watching, and uh, hope you learned something.